TeamCity 2020.2 comes with an exciting new feature called Agentless Build Steps, which is primarily aimed at power users and plugin developers. Let's check it out. Let me show you one of the many use cases for Agentless Build Steps. Imagine you have a project on your TeamCity server, which consists of a simple build chain. So you build your software, at the end you deploy your software, and in between you have, for example, for organizational reasons, a manual deployment approval step. That doesn't happen inside TeamCity, but it happens inside a custom external web application that simply lists out for your manager, for example, all deployments waiting for approval. Now, this deployment approval step here is just a placeholder for any external service independent from TeamCity that you call during your build chain. So it could be a web app for deployment approvals or for manual QA verifications. It could be any scripts or programs running on some server that your build needs to wait on. It could be an external deployment service even. Anything that's independent from your TeamCity server. Now let's have a look at that deployment approval configuration. In this example, it consists of two build steps. The first one notifies the deployment server, which sends a REST call to that external application you just saw. It's a bit artificial because it's a long running REST call, so it waits until the deployment approval service says, yes, this build is approved, which on the other hand means that your build agent is blocked. It cannot be used for any other projects on your Team City server. It has to wait for that approval to happen. And with Team City 2020.2, there now is a way to reuse that build agent while Team City has to wait for the approval. And that is called detaching the build agent. Looking at that build step, you can see it simply prints out a Team City service message, hash hash Team City build detached from agent to the build system out. Then the build agent can be used for any other build and TeamCity waits for the external application to do a callback to execute a REST call to signal you can continue with the build chain. Until that time, the build agent can do whatever it wants. Now let's run such a build. As you can see, the deployment is waiting for the deployment approval to happen. The deployment approval, on the other hand, is running in detached mode, seen by this icon here, and waiting for the callback from the external service. Now I have one build agent, and while the deployment approval is running, I can still use that build agent for any other build on my system, so maybe just rerunning the build configuration here. Which brings us to licensing. It's very simple. If you have one build agent license, you can use it for running one normal build, and in addition, on top, you can run one agentless build, so two in total. If you had three licenses, you could run simultaneously three normal builds, plus, in addition, three agentless builds, so six in total. Let's execute the approval. Hitting the Approve button will send a REST call back to Team City, signaling the build has finished. You can continue with the build chain. And going back to Team City, you can see it already received the REST call. Success, and now the actual deployment is running. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's TeamCity 2020.2's Agentless Build Steps feature. Enjoy.